Ariel Hawani in Midtown Manhattan alongside the former UFC heavyweight champion Brock Lesnar, who of course will be a coach on the 13th season of The Ultimate Fighter, which premieres this Wednesday night beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, Brock, thank you so much for taking the hey, time to join us. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, great to, uh, great to talk to you in person for the first time in a very long time. The first question, uh, let's get it out of the way. I want to address it at the top. Everyone wants to know what happened to the beard. It wasn't just <laughs> the most epic beard in MMA, one of the best in the world. Really. Oh, winter time's over and, and uh, had had to go. So, no, it was. I, I, I've been growing uh, the beard the last few winters uh, because of uh, hunting season and fishing. And, and uh, nah, winter's, winter's just about over. I'm hoping. Uh, yeah. One last snowstorm, though, but uh, no, nah, we just had to take it off. So it won't be coming back for your next fight? I don't think so. No, I think it took me like uh, four months maybe to grow, but uh, no. I appreciate, uh, appreciate people uh, enjoying the beard though. Yes, it was a phenomenon <laughs> and, and I, um, I, I predict that you being on The Ultimate Fighter will be a phenomenon. I think a lot of people are excited about this. And before we talk about that experience, I think we need, really need to start October 23rd, uh, 2010. That's when you did lose your title to Cain Velasquez. Mm -hmm. A tough night for you. I'm sure you've been able to digest it since then. Um, if you can and look back what happened, what went wrong for you out there? Well, I, was, I just actually watched the fight uh, uh, a, f a week ago and um, a, a wasn't sure how to approach it. And um, I think it boils down to um, last year I had a lot going on in my life. Um, you know, I, I fought through diverticulitis, made my comeback, fought uh, Shane Carwin, and then fought uh, uh, Cain Velasquez. Um, as I watched the fight, I, I could see that um, that there was probably he just I just wasn't over, be able to overcome uh, Kane's uh, you know I really don't know what happened. <laughs> he beat my ass. That's what happened. If I put it that way, but uh, <clears throat> it's one of those things. I don't I don't I don't like to lose, and and uh, you know you dust yourself off and, and get back on the horse and. Here I am, you know, I mean, it's been able to work out, uh, I don't know how it worked, you know, I'm, I'm fighting the guy that if I would have beat Kane, I'm, I would, I'm fighting Junior DeSantos, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing the ultimate, the ultimate fighter, somehow I was able to land on my feet throughout this and, and I suffered a loss, but uh, I, I'm, I'm learning a lot from it, um, I made, made some changes in my training camp and, and um, you got to just evaluate things, and, and hopefully these things are are, are going to make a difference. Do you still think about the loss? Um, you know, I think of how I can fix things. You know, uh, you know, it's water under the bridge, but it's one of those things where I've got to be able to go back and look at it and analyze it. And, and as I analyze the fight myself uh, with my coaching staff, uh, I didn't do so bad. You know, I was uh, I rushed the fight. Um, I, I, I put pressure on it. Change, you know, it was totally different. Uh, I, I rushed things, changed the game plan a little bit on the fly. Uh, was trading punches with him, and, and got uh, I got hit with a, a punch that I couldn't uh, recover from. You know, and, and um, it's one of those things. That's fighting. You know, it's a matter of inches, and, and especially when you're dealing with with heavyweights. You know, and, and guys in there swinging little gloves around. Uh, somebody's going to go down. You know? As you know, you're a hot topic in the sport. Anytime you do anything, it's, it's major news. And, and after the loss, there was some speculation, rumors, that you might be done with the UFC, that you were going to leave MMA. Was that ever the case? I, it really never crossed my mind. I mean, I, what people really don't understand is that last year, I had a lot of things you know, that happened in one year, you know, from being sick to being on my deathbed having a, uh, another child, uh, fighting two title fights, I was completely exhausted. I needed to take uh, a lot of time out and, and get away from the spotlight and, and now I'm able to come back. I feel very refreshed and, and um, I'm, no, I never, I, it never really crossed. I had to go back and an, an, analyze what I really wanted out of life. It's not just fighting, it's, is it, you know, do I want to go out and risk uh, getting severely injured? Uh, why, why did the fight go the way it did, and, and all these things? You know, if you're 
if you there's a lot on the line you know it's it's not just a, a title it's not i'm not fighting for to be the champion there you know there's a lot of other things on the line that you that you put in store you know there's a lot of hard work and and i fight for my family and and, and i fight because i love it um there was a lot of speculation i think uh I have no idea. Probably because I just go dark after, you know, even when I win, I go dark. I, if I lose, I go dark. I just need to get out of the light and, and get back and get grounded again because my training camps are, uh, to me, uh, very, very long and strenuous and, and the fight, uh, the spotlight takes a lot out of me and, and so I need to go back and get grounded and, and uh, crawl back into my cave and, and uh, so there's probably I can see where there was a lot of speculation, and then especially with the the stuff with the Undertaker, and and um, you know, so there was probably. It's amazing how I don't even have to go and and tell anything, or and just close the door, and and people will talk about me for months to come, and and it's it's a good thing.